Hey everyone, it's Chad Robinson, the PA Geek here. And for a long time, I've wanted to record a tutorial about using the amazing application Sprint Timer and sort of looking at the various ways in which that you can use this to get really impressive results. Hey everyone, it's Chad Robinson, the PA Geek here, and I'm really excited to take you on a tour of the Sprint Timer app, which without a doubt is my favorite tool for making more efficient and effective and, and really solving something that really does bring about a better result for your students and even in many cases brings back activity time to your class. So if you're doing anything such as fitness testing and you need to time students running or you're doing um, an athletics meet and again you need to time people, you can basically give photo finishes to those situations and really speed up and leverage the time it takes to conduct that actual recording. So it is a game changer, but in many cases, you know, I get emails from people who've gone to use it and it hasn't been successful for them because there's a few nuances and things that you need to think about before you go out and use it. And once you get those set up, um, you sort of happening and you're really quite comfortable with it, then you can get some great results. So I'm going to take you on a tour. I'm going to show you an example, and then I'm going to give you some um, actual situations from where I've used it with some pictures in, just to show you the sort of clarity that you can get. Now, you will notice that I'm using the iPhone deliberately because the iPhone has a better camera than the iPad and it's a bit more portable, which makes it easy if you're standing on the finish line to you know, whip out your phone and, and track the results. So once you've chosen which one you want to use, iPhone or iPad, then you can hop into the app. Now, there are a few settings that we need to do first, but I'll just give you some uh, idea of the, the, the option called set start. And you can see here, there's a few different choices. So, I mean, I never play with these. I just keep them as they are. And I always keep, keep the clock to start via a manual um, press. So the person who's using the iPad or the iPhone is the person who starts the timer. You can have it set up so that the clock will start if it if it triggers a certain decibel range, etc. I don't tend to do that um, because it's just one extra layer of complexity. So keeping it really simple that the person using the device is the person who starts the timer um, and you'll definitely find it. It works much more in your favor. So I'm going to hit done. The thing that I always recommend is to go along to set finish and you'll see here that these are important settings. You need to decide which way the race is actually being ran from. So you, you click on the arrow of which the direction that the runners are running in. So by default, it'll probably be that if you're doing like an athletic event um, and it should stay like that. But just check, you want to make sure. And then finish length, well, basically that is how long the photo finish length is going to be. So in a 100 meter race, it's probably realistic to think that um, everyone will finish within around about sort of seven seconds of one another. You'll know your students, you'll know your conditions. Um, you wanna set that finish line length to be the distance between when the first person will finish the race right through to the end end person so customize that to suit and then down here you've got some other settings I just tend to leave them um, as they are and then select done now at this point what you then need to do is position yourself in or on the finish line and you want to do so so that you are lining yourself up with the finish line so imagine standing on that finish line now you've got your phone in your hand or your iPad and you're basically sitting there waiting for the gun to go. All right, so you can imagine here we are on the finish line. You're, you know, positioned, ready and raring to go and the runners have assembled uh, at the start line for them. So this is actually a photo from one of my colleagues who is just using their phone and they're about to do the photo finish using the Sprint Timer app. So they set it up based on the conditions that we outlined in the previous example. So um, basically this is where they would be looking at right now. And you want to imagine that the gun has, has or is about to go. And as soon as you see this screen disappear, that would be the trigger to um, let you know that the race has started. So bang, when the gun goes, the person will hit start clock which is the, the big button on that screen, um, which you'll see. So the race has started now, the runners are coming through, 
And as they cross the finish line, you get to actually then finish the race. Obviously, all the runners cross the line. And you end up with an image that looks something like this here. Now, the cool part about this is that when you start to move back through the race, you then get to actually focus in on things. Now, when you've finished your race, this is what's presented to you. And you can see here that if you scroll your finger from right to left, then you actually get to progress through the, the people, the runners, as they cross the finish line. So uh, in my case, I was the only person running, so there will be only one person. But if there was more than one runner, you would scroll through and you'd keep finding them at the point they crossed the line. Now, in my case, the finish line is obviously this white bar. So you line it up with the chest, or the, the torso. And then in the top right, you can actually see the time that it took from when the gun went to when I crossed that particular line. And you can see here you can keep scrolling through and if the next person was here, you'd click on, or sorry, you'd line up the line with their chest and you'd be able to see the difference between them. Now a couple of little things that um, people can play with to get the best result. You can see here that this is actually really quite clear um, in terms of the actual result, very clear to see me, uh, etc. I, I look sort of normal. But depending on how far away you are and depending on how fast the runners are moving, you may need to play around with the slice option just to get it perfect. So I'll just click on that and show you what, what I mean. So slice by default will probably, probably be somewhere in the middle. And if I scroll through um, again, let's just see what that's done. So, so you see how when I manipulated the slice upwards, it, it sort of has moved me out across more frames. And you can see if I bring that down again and then go back to where I was, you can see I'm now looking much more, much more normal. And that's probably the best outcome there. Very clear, easy to tell um, the time that I've crossed the line in. And you can see if I scroll right up to the top here, then this has now broken me up across much more of the image. But like I said, this will, re Ooh, that's obviously unreadable. But depending on how far you are to the people and how um, how you know how fast they're moving, you will have a slice um, certain optimal range. So I tend to find that it's always usually around the midpoint or a little bit below, which will be optimal um, based on where you're standing. So once you've done that, there's a couple of options, and you can see here that you can hit save and you can give the race a description and you can save an image and you can actually save um, marking lines, etc. And it'll be saved to your, um, your device, if that makes sense, so that you can go back and review it. And another thing, another feature that I tend to play with is the mark option, which you can see here. So you get to mark each runner in the race. So if I click on mark, now you can actually have a start list. I, I never tend to do that, but I just hit this, the mark button and then I can scroll ac across and I can keep marking people and as you can see I scroll through and, and hit mark and you would do that with each runner in the race keep pressing mark and you can see at the top it's actually shown the times that those runners have produced for their race and then you can go ahead and save that um, to your your iPad, your iPhone, etc., and then print out these images where um, each runner is clearly shown when they've crossed the line. So that is, in a nutshell, how to use Sprint Timer. I'm going to show you a couple of examples of best practice and sort of ways and means that you can set it up to get the best results. So here's an example of a race in which we use Sprint Timer. In fact, it's, a, it's part of our annual event. But in the past, when we were just using people on the finish lines and they were standing there with a hand timer, we, we used to call so many draws because honestly, they look like draws and we had no way to split them. But you know, this here looked like a draw, but when we look at it with sprint timer, it's cl pretty clear that it wasn't. And um, you know, we're able to decide who the winner was, which, which is quite important when you've got you know, kids competing, etc. Now, a couple of things that I wanna point out is you will notice there's a solid blue 
here in the background. And what we did is we put up a tarp or a piece of material um, pretty much in line with the finish line so that we had this nice solid color to be able to compare and contrast against. Now, the next thing that I will mention is you will probably notice that we are sitting from a bit of a top-down perspective, which is really quite useful um, because we can see the entire eight lanes. And to make that happen, we sit in this thing, which we found uh, at our school. And it just allows us to get from a top-down perspective. The finish line is here. And with this, we can actually see all eight lanes. We can see very clearly now, as opposed to standing on the side of the finish line then trying to look through people, which is obviously impossible. So you want to get a top-down perspective so that you can capture images that look a little bit more like this um, rather than the impossible on the side, not being able to see everyone clearly. So Sprint Timer has gone on to be an absolute game changer. If you follow these steps and get it set up right and practice in some situations where it doesn't matter if you make a mistake, you will be confident and you will be able to produce some really strong results when it does count. So let me know if you have any questions. Absolutely love talking about the app and we'll speak soon.